headed to New York for other reasons, but the main part of this video is we're actually going to a three-star Michelin restaurant. I've been to a couple in my life and I've vlogged them a couple times, but I wanted to center sort of a video around this experience. Pretty much take you guys with me, show you what it's like, and there's no better place to do it than New York, I think so. So the Michelin Guide is basically a series of books that started out as it would publish what restaurants receive the distinction of a Michelin star. You can get one star, two star, and three star. And I've been trying to make this clip for like 30 minutes of the announcements. They're just overpowering the entire mascot logo. This is your final bodyguard for the flight. Restaurants can lose stars too. That will have to be like big drama sometimes in the restaurant scene. They'll have food critics secretly go in and essentially these critics will be kind of undercover and they'll be the one to base off whether or not it's like a one star, two star, three star. The distinction between one star, two star, three star. I'll talk a bit more about once we get there. The reason I came here is not purely for the restaurant. When I had the trip planned, I was looking for reservations and I figured, you know what, why not just check? And the only reservation space available at the place we're going tonight was the one I had. Perfect timing. I think someone must have canceled maybe and we got lucky. So I quickly want to run over how the Michelin stars work. Dinner's in an hour, so pretty much one star Michelin food, they define it as a very good restaurant in its category. And I feel like a misconception sometimes about having a Michelin star is that it's fancy, but there's hole in the wall restaurants that aren't fancy at all and have a Michelin star. So it pretty much is just like exceptional food quality, I find, a simple way to define it. And then two star, they find it as excellent cooking worth a detour. And I find the restaurant has two Michelin stars for the most part. It's usually a tasting menu, there's no a la carte menu, and they start to get quite fancy and then three stars defined as exceptional cuisine worth a special journey so that's what we have in store for tonight and there's a lot more that goes into what makes it two star three star one star but to keep it simple terms that's how it is i think for example you need a certain amount of wines on your list it could be like the ambiance my point is it's not only about the taste of the food so tonight we're going to per se which is a three-star michelin restaurant by thomas keller i actually have been over 10 years ago i was probably like 13 12 as a kid sometimes you're picky and so i don't really remember the experience that much all i remember is i didn't bring a suit jacket and they give you like loners and it was way too big for me because i was a little kid but yeah thomas keller who also owns the french laundry which i'm pretty sure has won the title best restaurant in the world multiple years i actually have another embarrassing story about that but i'll save that for the car. Per se opened in 2006 and it's had three Michelin stars every year since it's opened. A lot of respect for these restaurants because as my dad is in the restaurant business himself, I know how like stressful and hard it is to run a three-star Michelin restaurant. Like I can only imagine how stressful it is, especially if you're just starting and trying to earn your stars. It's crazy. So at a lot of these restaurants, they require suit jackets. Only thing is I haven't got a haircut in like a month. So I'm looking kind of rough up there, but Mochi is here. We brought Mochi and they're actually doing something very special for us. And they put a nine course tasting menu together for mochi. Natural ingredients. Each course is gonna be a little plate when we go there. Perfectly next to ours. She's excited. What? So yeah, like I was saying earlier, Thomas Keller owns French Laundry, which I'm sure you guys have heard of before. And I actually went there. It's in Napa Valley, probably over 10 years ago with my dad. I was young once again. This is when I was like starting to get into food, but not like knowing what everything was really. Of course, California is three hours ahead of the East Coast. And I was like, just a bratty kid. I'm like falling asleep at the table. And then my dad, obviously the best dad, just took me home and we didn't even finish the dinner. And then I still joke with him about it to this day, being like, how did you let me go home early, dad? You just made me stay and eat everything. That's my biggest embarrassment food story. I left the French laundry early. What about your Elton John story? I also once Elton John performed at a charity event we are at and I was sleeping on my mom's lap. <laughs> I was like super young there, so that's not as embarrassing. So the restaurant is actually located right at Columbus Circle inside the Deutsche Bank building, and it's on the fourth floor. So we just got seated. As you can see, the room 
looks amazing. Out of respect for the other people enjoying their meal, I'm gonna not try to film so obnoxiously, but I'm still gonna try and get the experience caught on camera. So after we were seated, we were handed an iPad actually, and that's their wine list. And it was actually 179 pages long somehow. And what I thought was pretty cool is you could bookmark the drinks that you wanted. So like I was saying earlier, they have a vegetable tasting menu and Sid is pescatarian, but she wants to try it out. And then I'm gonna do the regular tasting menu. So that's gonna be a perfect match. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure they never reuse the same ingredient twice here for each dish, which is pretty cool. So they gave you a mother of pearl spoon when you're eating vegetarian. When they give you a mother of pearl spoon for caviar, it's supposed to not alter the taste of caviar at all. So it's kind of funny that they gave her one still when they're, she has quinoa caviar. I'm trying to get as much caviar as I can on it, like. So Sid and I, every time we go to like a really fancy restaurant, we do this thing called the napkin test. And essentially, I go to the washroom and leave my napkin and we time how long it takes for them to fold it and put it back. So we're gonna do the test. really fancy restaurants. Making good sauces is so hard, so they always have amazing sauces that are like so complicated. So we had our last Avery course, and I think they take you into the kitchen at one point. And one thing I noticed in all these Michelin star kitchens is it's so quiet, everything's so clean perfect because everyone knows exactly what they're supposed to do. Sometimes people think the restaurant is this is like yelling, which it is, but in these like well-oiled machine kitchens, it's like perfect. Everything's just like factory. No speaking really. Hopefully they let us go in the kitchen. So dessert was probably my second favorite course out of all of them. And basically how they did it was they put like eight little different bites of desserts down. The idea was to just try one of each. It was super indulgent, but everything was super good. We just paid the bill and he offered to give us a little kitchen tour. So we're getting a little behind the scenes tour. So they're nice enough to give us a tour of the kitchen and the kitchen was insanely clean. It looked like they hadn't even started serving food yet. As you guys can see here, they actually have something really cool in the restaurant that I've never seen another restaurant have. And they have a live feed of Thomas Keller's other restaurants. So the French Laundry and Surf Club, there's live feeds. As you can see, the chefs were waving at us at the French Laundry. And I don't think there's a real purpose for it, but I guess it kind of keeps like the team in a community bond. And one of the chefs actually told me that he liked the videos. <laughs> Food was so good. So as we continued the tour, he showed us the fridge and they actually don't have a walk-in fridge at per se, which is kind of surprising. He told us they just have a bunch of these massive fridges throughout the restaurant. That's only used like during service. No. Okay, I'm gonna talk to Mark. Stop get the order. Fuck and off. And then as we continued the tour, he showed us a bunch of the framed classic menus that they have on the wall, including a piece of the burnt down restaurant because it actually burnt down before it opened, I think in 2004. And also, of course, they have the wall of Michelin, I guess I could call it, where each year they've had three-star Michelin distinction. So just a very cool experience. And they let us out and they let us out from the kitchen and that was our meal. So we just wrapped up our meal. He gave us our menu, some shortbread cookies, personalized cases. Huge shout out to Per Se, amazing meal. Now I've got to go home in a food coma. So tired last night after the dinner. I didn't end up trying these, but I'm going to try them in the morning after. Per se, shortbread cookies. The experience continues to the next day. These are amazing. I'm pretty sure when I went to the French Laundry like over 10 years ago, they also give you shortbread cookies. And they also gave us our menus to take home frame them or something, which is very nice. Subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. I know I usually do vlogs, but I wanted to make a video centered around this. Hope you guys enjoyed it.